Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to all our 12th Monarchs out there in Monarch Nation coming off a disappointing loss at Southern Mississippi in a game that for the first 37 minutes, I felt we were the best team in Conference USA. And I say that because we were playing the team that I believe is the best team in the league. Statistics back that up. They lead the league in offense, defense, outstanding. Uh, in special teams, and for the first 37 minutes, we were leading this game 31 to 21, uh, and then got hit with some adversity. Uh, and playing a veteran team like Southern Mississippi, where 18 of their 22 starters are upperclassmen that have grown up together and played together, uh, they handled the adversity well. We did not in that stretch, and, and that's what led to uh, the final outcome. In this game, I felt like going into it, we had a, had a great week of practice, have a lot of confidence, had a lot of confidence, still have a lot of confidence coming off the, the wins at San Antonio, the win uh, at home against UTEP. And our guys played with a lot of confidence, even with uh, Ray Lowry, the leading rusher in the league, being out for this game. Uh, went into it with a lot of confidence. And, and the game actually started slowly for us uh, on offense. We went three straight, three and outs, uh, and then David uh, was injured, and from that point, Schuler came in and, and played a really good football game. Uh, the game changer early in this one was down seven to nothing when we got the big strip from Terrell Reed, and then Martez Simpson uh, picked it up and ran it in for a touchdown, and that changed the the entire outlook um, of the football game. And against uh, the best team in the league, uh, we led 17 to 14 at the half, and then. Um, then we, we let that adversity hit us late in the third quarter, early in the fourth on, on special teams. I thought Satchel was very good punting, 41.2 yard average. Uh, our kickoff team, Chris Kirtley, just keeps getting better. Uh, he's got a real good ability now to place the ball, which is helping us um, in that area. You can see as a, as a freshman, he's growing up. Uh, he hasn't played the 11 games like the other guys, but uh, he just keeps getting better. Made another field goal in this game, doing a good job there. Uh, kickoff return, we were not good. We didn't block well. Uh, a lot of young guys on that team we just got to keep working with uh, and getting better there. Defensively, the, the two big turnovers in the first half, uh, Falante Misha with his third pick in the last three quarters. Um, we were playing really good with a, with a lot of confidence. Um, only allowed the, the two touchdowns in the first half with the two turnovers. Uh, and then in the second half, they had three short fields, uh, which didn't help us with, with the turnovers and a, and a punt return they had. Um, and, and we did not handle that well. Uh, that stretch of about six minutes, late in the third and early in the fourth quarter. Simpson and Misher both had 11 tackles in this game, played really well. I, I was really excited for Martez Simpson going back home to not only score the touchdown, but get the 11 tackles. And then uh, Sean Carter and, and Justice Davilia played really well at safety. Carter had nine tackles, uh, Davilia had eight. Um, I think uh, Justice Davilia at this point is playing like, a, like an all-conference safety. Uh, you look at his statistics in terms of tackles really playing good football. And, and Sean Carter is a redshirt freshman is really coming on. It's exciting to see these young guys and the progress they're making. They're, they're starting to learn. And, and when that happens with a younger player, they, they think faster and then they play faster. And they're, they're really starting to process information a lot quicker. And that's a good sign for our team. Offensively, um, zero sacks allowed by our offensive line. I, I thought they played a really good game against a team that uh, was up near the top of the league in, in sacks and, and what we call havoc plays, turnovers, uh, TFLs. Uh, the guys played well up front. Uh, the, the two turnovers that led to scores were really disappointing. We had the, the fumble by Pascal on, on a screen pass that was, was going to get us some really good yardage. And then we had the, the fluke interception. The ball got tipped on one side of the ball, went all the way to the other side, and, and their guy made an outstanding Diving catch. Uh, Schuler played a solid game, 22 for 41, 228 yards. Uh, the three touchdowns. He had a really nice drive right before the half, that two minute drive where he hit Duhart on a third and 14 across the middle. Kept that drive alive. He had a, had a big run when I, I changed my mind on going for the 50 yard field goal. When I, when I recognized their block was going to be a middle block, I just didn't think we could get the ball up quick enough um, and sent the offense back out on fourth and five. And he was looking for Pascal, who fell down on a route. And then he took off and ran and got the first down. And he just executed that drive really well, particularly at the end when we didn't have any timeouts. 
Uh, Jeremy Cox was was outstanding in this game. 21 carries for 98 yards, and they were uh, they were all dirty, tough yards. There there wasn't a lot there initially at the line of scrimmage. He had to break a lot of tackles. His ball security was outstanding, uh, which you get concerned with with the, the number of times he was getting hit. Uh, but love the way he run and Duhart with a big game, nine for 134 and two touchdowns. You, you can see his progress, how much better he's getting. Uh, he played last year as a redshirt freshman, so he's still in that developmental phase, but he just keeps getting better and better. Uh, this week's opponent, FAU, is uh, coming off a game where uh, I thought they were outstanding. They lost at Florida 20 to 14 in overtime uh, in a game that it, it really looked to me like they dominated. Uh, they held Florida, who's the number eight team in the nation, fighting for uh, one of those final four slots, held them to 250 yards. They turned them over twice. They sacked them five times in that football game. And then they had 300 yards uh, of offense in some, in some pretty tough conditions. Florida can play some some defense, and FAU um, held their own offensively. Uh, their quarterback, uh, they're playing two quarterbacks. Johnson takes the majority of the snaps. Driscoll always comes in early in the game. Um, Johnson does a really good job protecting the ball. Uh, he's only turned it over uh, or, or thrown interceptions five times in 11 games, which is really impressive when you consider their record how well the quarterbacks are taking care of the football. That's that's an impressive statistic. Uh, defensively, uh, outstanding overall. Their, their last two games against Middle Tennessee, uh, who's a bowl team in Florida, uh, they've been outstanding. You can see they're making a lot of progress on that side of the football. Uh, they've got one of the best front sevens in Conference USA with their, their defensive line and linebackers. I thought their defensive line absolutely dominated Florida's offensive line. They controlled the line of scrimmage in that game, which was um, surprisingly disappointing to see from our standpoint how dominant they were in their defensive line. Um, they only allowed 123 yards rushing to Florida, 250 total yards and 20 points. They lead Conference USA with 28 sacks. And interestingly enough, 17 of those 28 have come in their, their two wins. Uh, in their win versus Charlotte and Florida International. And then they had five more sacks this past week against Florida. Um, as I said to our team, the, the games in November are the games to remember. Uh, these are the games that are the most meaningful. Uh, when you think back on a season, how you finish the season, uh, and this is clearly the biggest game in the history of our program. Uh, I'm glad it's at home, so we'll have our fans here to see it because we're going to need them in this one. This will be a uh, this would be a good football game. You know, we're, we're underdogs going into it, which I'm not surprised considering what they just did at Florida last week. Uh, but that's it's a good thing to have this game at home. Uh, and I also shared with our team that you know you you are what your record says you are. So we're a five and six team. They're a two and nine team. There's a reason why uh, both teams have the record they do. So. You know, we're going to take advantage of the things that we see that we can. We'll play to our strengths in this game and, and hopefully have a great performance. From an injury uh, standpoint, we had the, uh, an MRI was done this morning at, at 6.30 a.m. on David Washington on his knee. Uh, we don't know exactly what we're dealing with uh, at this point, so I'll have an update for you when, when I know once the doctors get a chance to read that. MRI, uh, and I spoke with Ray Lowry earlier this morning. Uh, Ray feels much better. Um, he definitely wants to play this weekend. Um, he's going to practice tomorrow morning, uh, which will be the first time he's you know, done something on that foot in the last eight days. He's been in a walking boot. So we'll see how he reacts tomorrow. And um, I know how badly he wants to play, but um, you know, his health and the condition of that foot is our number one concern. And, um, hopefully he'll be he'll be good to go. From um, a standpoint with the bowl games and the possibilities, we know now that what happened this past weekend with Rice and UTEP both losing that they've been eliminated from bowl contention. So there are five teams in the league in. There are two more slots, and uh, we're the only team left fighting for that. Um, that bowl slot, and our guys are well aware of it. They're excited. Uh, they understand the magnitude of this game and. Overall, when you look at Conference USA right now, uh, going into this weekend, um, it's really the way it should be. The two best teams in the East, Western Kentucky and Marshall, both at nine and two. 
They're going to play the two best teams in the West, Louisiana Tech and Southern Miss at 8-3. and three. They're going to play uh, Middle Tennessee's already in, and then, then we're the next team. And you know, when you study the teams, particularly those five teams that are in, uh, there's one common denominator with all five teams that are in, and that's they're getting outstanding quarterback play. And, you know, I've been asked by people, it, it doesn't seem like the league is as good as it was last year. Well, when you look back to last year, the, the quarterback play overall in the league uh, was much better. You know, the quarterback play is not at the same level as it was last year. And, and last year we had eight teams uh, that were bowl eligible. There were eight teams going into it. If you count um, Old Dominion, Middle Tennessee, and UAB were all six and six last year, and uh, we all had outstanding quarterback play. You know, there was a reason why eight teams were eligible. And then when you look at the bowl record for Conference USA, we've been four and one the last two years. We've had the best record in the country in bowl games, and I suspect those five that are already in are going to play well. You, know, you look at Western Kentucky, Brandon Dowdy, who's clearly going to be the player of the year. He's thrown 37 touchdowns, only six interceptions. You know, Nick Mullen at Southern Miss, he's second in the league in passing right now. 32 touchdowns, only eight interceptions. Um, Brent Stockstill is having an outstanding year as a freshman at Middle Tennessee. He's only going to get better, be better and better. He's 26 and eight. Uh, Driscoll at Latex, 21 and five. And then Litton, the freshman at Marshall, who's going to be another great quarterback. He's 20 and five. So those guys have all played really well. And we've had solid quarterback play here this year. Um, between Schuler and David, they combined for 17 touchdowns, nine interceptions. So that's why we're still you know, in the hunt right now, we're in the conversation. So I've, being a former quarterback, having coached it my whole life, I always feel like it comes back to that position. That's clearly the direction of your team by your quarterback. And we'll need, uh, we'll need good, productive play from Shuler Bentley uh, in this game this weekend to get bowl eligible. And I'll take questions. Bobby, one of the things that Ron Wickham said, and I think he said this too, that Shuler needed to work on mm -hmm. was his athleticism. Mm -hmm. he, he looked like, I mean, it's, and it hasn't been that long, but he looked sure. a little more athletic Saturday than, I, than he did mm -hmm. against Eastern Michigan. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right in that, uh, that, that assessment. He's had uh, a full month. He had a full four weeks from the time that David took over, and they specifically just got after it between Schuler and and Coach Whitcomb, and all the time in practice when we're doing special teams or there's a period that doesn't involve the quarterbacks. It's been all footwork. It's been core strength. Uh, they've watched every clip of video and when to step to certain areas of the pocket, when to tuck it and go. And um, you saw that Saturday night. It was clear to me, too. I saw it on the field, and then I saw it again when I studied the video. Um, no better example than the fourth and five where nothing was open. He took off and, and gained eight yards. You know, he's he's worked on it so much now that he's gained confidence in it. And Schuler's not unlike any of our other freshmen that are playing right now. You know, they're just growing each game. He's gaining confidence each game. And uh, the two games that he's played in significantly um, since David took over, the Western Kentucky game, um, he threw for three touchdowns and ran for one. And then in this game, you know, he threw for three touchdowns and had a, had a fluke interception. Um, he's played well. He's protected the ball well. Uh, we'd like to see that completion percentage go up. We'd like to see that improve. You know, 22 for 41 is OK, but it's not where his numbers have been, you know, all through preseason, spring ball. You know, he should be up more around 60, 65%. Uh, but there's definite improvement, Harry, that we see. And, you know, he's going to need to play well this weekend for us to win. Talked all year about being, you know, getting to this bowl eligible state. So mm -hmm. just the importance and meaning of this game to the, to the program. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Sure. Biggest biggest game in the history of the program. And we've had some big ones around here. You know, I think back, this is our seventh year of playing. We've only been eligible for postseason for three years based on rules. You know, from when we first started and we weren't eligible the first two years, even though we were nine and two and eight and three. And then the transition years we were eight and four and six and six. This is only the third year that we've been eligible and, and here it is, it's right in front of us again. And uh, everybody in our building's excited about this. You know, I hope the fans are gonna bring a lot of energy Saturday because this would be this would be historical for our program. And as I said to our players, I said, imagine coming back to Old Dominion 15, 20 years from now and you got your son with you and you point to the picture 
of the first ever team in Old Dominion that went to a bowl game. You know, and you point to yourself in that picture. So it, it's there's so much there, not just for now, but for the players down the road that makes this a historical game. You, you mentioned confidence several times and you can mm -hmm. run through it. Well, what's the basis, generally speaking, for all the confidence mm -hmm. that this team has? Well, the number one reason is they, they see themselves playing better football. They see it. You know, they, they felt it in the Western Kentucky game, even though the score didn't really reveal it, and then gained confidence from going on the road and, and beating San Antonio, who's won two straight since that time, and then beating UTEP at home, a team we lost to last year when both teams were four and five and needed that win. Uh, and then the way they played for the first 37 minutes at Southern Miss, you know, they just feel it now. That's number one. Number two is the fact we've got 33 first and second year guys that are playing. You know, there's a lot of inexperience that has gained experience and gained confidence as the season's gone on. So th those are the two biggest reasons why we're a much more confident football team than we were coming out of that three-game stretch after the Marshall game. Yeah, fair to say that uh, Florida Atlantic's game against Michigan, I mean against, uh, yeah, Michigan, got your, Florida got your team's attention? Well, we, we, they had our attention before because of the magnitude of the game, but now that they they saw the score. Everybody was aware of it uh, Saturday after our game because everybody knew it. And I addressed it in the locker room right after the game. So they're aware of how good Florida Atlantic is. We've been following them all year. I mean, most of their games are close. They've lost five games by 10 points or less this season. And, and they've lost in pretty dramatic fashion. It's, it's generally been something they've done, whether it's a, a turnover, a misplay, something's happened. Uh, that's cost them the game, similar to what happened in the Florida game Saturday. So our guys are well aware of Florida Atlantic. They know how good they are. We played them last year. It was a, a field goal with no time left to win. So everybody's fully aware of it and fully aware of what this game means. You had injuries that you talked about how important the quarterback position is, the quarterback mm -hmm. and, and your star running back. Mm -hmm. uh, just talking about your team's ability to overcome that, mm -hmm. what, what's made that possible? Well, the fact that um, – you know, when, when David got hurt Saturday, Schuler came in and played really well. You know, we scored, scored 31 points as a team, seven by the defense, but it, you know, we scored 24 points on offense with him in there in a little bit over uh, 25 minutes. So the production was there. Everybody felt it. Everybody saw it. And then the way Jeremy Cox played, filling in for Ray Lowry. I mean, the kids could see it. They, they were watching it. They were part of it. They were all excited when he's out there breaking tackle after tackle and, and gaining those tough yards. So what's happened to us in a number of situations where we've been injured is the guys who have come in for the injured players have played at a high level. Uh, and the teams felt that. And, and when you get that excitement level that we have right now around here, that's the beauty of youth, particularly as young as we are. It doesn't take much to get them excited. Uh, and they're excited right now. Doesn't take much to get me excited, Ted. I'm excited. Coach, speaking of that excitement, you know, you said this is the biggest game in history. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of weight on these kids' shoulders. How do you relieve some of that pressure, or do you just mm -hmm. talk about it? Well, we don't, we don't use the word pressure. You know, to me, pressure is for people that aren't prepared. People who aren't prepared feel pressure. So we've been talking about having a sense of urgency. And we've basically been in elimination games for the last month. I mean, this started for us at 3-5 and five when we were at San Antonio. So we've talked about having that sense of urgency. We've talked about our backs have been against the wall for a month. So they know it and they've responded to it. And I've always tried to, with this program, make the games that are in November the really important games. When you get down to it, those are the ones that matter the most. Sure, you've got to be good in September and October to get to meaningful games. But having those games in November be the ones to remember, that's put that sense of urgency on this program every time we've stepped into November. We're, we're 19 and three in that month, so our players have responded. What have you asked Santa for this year? I'm sorry? What have you asked Santa for this year? Santa? Yeah. Uh, I haven't asked him for anything. He's such a good guy, he just usually responds with something positive. Anything else for Coach? Hey, thank you all for coming. 12th Monarchs will need you loud and proud Saturday at SB Ballard Stadium.